Veal Milanese is one of the world's great dishes. It's from northern Italy, around the area of Milan and the area of Lombardia. As you can tell by the name Milanese, this is done with a cotoletta, it's done with a veal chop, and we cook it on the bone, so it's gonna be super juicy on the inside, it's gonna be really crispy on the outside. Hi, my name is Andrew Carmelini. I'm the chef and owner of Carne Mari and many other restaurants. Here to make one of my favorite Italian meat dishes, very classic, veal milanese. So we're gonna do the very non-Italian technique of brining. Veal sometimes isn't as fatty, really, as beef is, and so the brine is just basic chemistry, really, and it kind of softens the meat, makes it super, super tender, and it's just a nice technique to guarantee that if you make this, it's gonna come out great. So to start our brine, you're gonna have boiling water, and you're gonna add salt, and it's gonna make the veal really juicy, but it's also gonna give it a little bit of flavor. I like to put a little bit of sugar in the brine also. It kind of balances the salt and helps caramelize the meat a little bit when it's in the pan. This is a northern Italian dish. You're really close to the Swiss border, very similar to like a Wiener schnitzel a little bit. So like a Wiener schnitzel you'll have with thin slices of kind of like scallopini of veal. But this is a veal chop. It's gonna come from the short loin of a veal, very similar to a beef chop or a steak for two. Uh, and cooking something on the bone is really, really important in meat cooking because that bone side of the meat will protect it from the heat. And so this whole area here is gonna come out nice and pink looking and it's gonna be really super juicy and it's gonna release a lot of that meaty flavor. So we have our brine, uh, that's cooling. It's really, really important that our brine is uh, nice and cold when we put it over the veal. And we have our veal chop. And we're gonna pound this guy out. Don't be afraid to use a little bit of force. And we pound it out, not to tenderize it because it's a super tender piece of meat already, but we just want it to be a little bit thinner because we want the breading to be like golden brown and delicious. So this is gonna make it the same thickness so we can achieve that. Yeah, don't be afraid to, 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 to whack it a little bit. And this part up here, the duckle part, which is actually my favorite part of the veal chop, it's like super delicious and has all that good fat inside it. You wanna make sure you, you get that guy also. The Italians call this elephant ears, right? Because they kind of like look like, like elephant ears a little bit. It's kind of like a fun little saying for that. That guy looks pretty good. We're gonna put that in our container and we're gonna pour our brine over that. You know, this is pretty thin, so we don't have to brine it too long, 20, 30 minutes. Just cover it like that, stick it in the fridge, let it soak, let it get tender. All right, we're gonna do what real professional chefs call standard breading procedure, which is really fancy. It just says we're gonna bread it. So we're gonna have our flour, and then we're gonna have a little egg wash. And you can put that in a bowl or put it kind of direct in here, that's fine. Put a little pepper in there. You know, I like to put like a little bit of milk, but you can also put water if you want, a little bit of salt. I like to put that seasoning inside the egg wash because it seasoned it. Again, it's about layering flavors all the time. I just wanna whisk that up. Standard breading procedure. Now, in Italy, they don't use panko breadcrumbs. I like to use panko breadcrumbs, the Japanese breadcrumbs, just because they're like super crispy. All right, so we have our brine guy here. You want to just pat that dry a little bit. You'll notice that this veal is not super white. You know, sometimes there's this almost like an 80s thing about having like white veal and Italian veal, this is organic free range veal, it's not a cage veal, so it's a humanely raised veal, and the flesh of this animal is gonna be a little bit redder, almost looking like beef. And that's very similar to the veal you're gonna see in Italy. Uh, so we got a dried off veal chop. You can do this a couple different ways. I like to put a flour into the side and shake it a little bit, and then sprinkle some Parmesan on the outside a little bit. It's not a veal Parmigiana. I like to put a little bit of the grated Parmesan inside because it's, it's uh, I don't know, it gives a kind of umami kind of flake flavor a little bit. And if you do this right, you always have a dry hand and a wet hand. Your wet hand being the one you, you put your eggs in and the dry hand, the one you put your flour in. Press your bread into it. Gets a little messy, but that's okay. There you go. All right, so we have our breaded veal. We're gonna do a little chef technique. When you do something like this and it's expensive, you wanna make sure that the bone looks really, really nice sometimes we'll wrap it in a little bit of foil. That's like a little chef hat you can put on that to kind of protect it so it looks good. I heated up some grapeseed oil. You do want the oil to be smoking a little bit. You want the pan to be hot enough so when you put this inside, you want to be able to hear that right away, that If you put the veal chop in there when the oil's too cold, it's gonna get a little soggy on the outside. This is not something 
that you cook and you just kind of like leave in the pan and go do something else. You want to kind of keep that feel kind of moving around, which is really the art and the fun of like cooking, right? It's like ballet like a little bit. You want to keep everything moving to get that kind of like golden color. But if it kind of like stays in the same area, it's gonna maybe burn. Great Italian food is really just like this. It's three or four ingredients. It's just done in the right way, which is kind of the Italian spirit of it. And again, it's not overly complicated. It's just doing things the right way and with care and like a lot of love, which kind of almost sounds cliche when I say that. But that's something you really don't understand until you like live and work in Italy. When I was a younger cook in my 20s, I spent about two years working in Italy. Some Michelin star places, higher end places, but also kind of like working in trattorias and neighborhood joints, which is honestly where you find the soul of Italian cooking a little bit. So that's guys starting to get nice and good. So traditionally, you wouldn't use any oil. They actually like to use it with, use it with a little, uh, mostly butter. And I like to start it in oil to get it really, really crispy. I put a little bit of garlic inside, which you won't see in Milan. You won't see any garlic in a lot of Milanese cooking, but I like to put it in because I love garlic. I like to use some rosemary and some sage. That crackle's a good thing. That is the oils from those herbs kind of like releasing. The butter is gonna be really cool because it's gonna kind of like give it this nutty flavor. The milk solids and the butter are gonna kind of like bubble and caramelize and give it this really kind of nutty flavor. This is where we're gonna go in the oven. Oven at like about 375, 400. Two or three minutes each side. All right, smells very, very good in here. You get the herbs and that garlic. I bet it's nice and bubbly. Oh, there you go. That's what you want to see. Nice and bubbly. And I kind of use some of that flavored herb butter. Again, the butter's not burnt, it's kind of brown, right? This is like, the Italians would call that hazelnut butter, al noche. It's kind of like, has a hazelnut flavor from that milk solids kind of caramelizing. And you get all the sage in there, the rosemary, a little piece of garlic, and it's just like, kind of intoxicating. There you go, that's what you want. I mean, that's golden brown, delicious. I am a golden god of veal. Look at that, amazing. A Little bit of arugula salad. I just like put it on the plate a little bit like that. Squeeze a lemon over that. Salt, a couple things of Parmesan. You can even put some on top of the veal. A little umami blast, be tasty. I have a little roasted tomato on the vine here. You gotta like roast that in the oven like for five minutes. And then I have these lemons. These lemons are charred a little bit. We throw them on the grill. You could also just use a raw lemon. But traditionally, you're gonna have a squeeze of lemon on top. Just kind of like help kind of cut through all that meatiness on the outside. And this is what you want to do right before you eat it because you don't want it to get too soggy afterwards. Again, a couple ingredients, some really, really good technique, just made with care. And that's what really classic Italian food should be all about. We have a beautiful feel Milanese cooked on the bone. It's nice and rosy over here. See that like nice and pink? Mmm. Definitely crispy on the outside, definitely juicy, especially like towards the bone. You can serve a couple different wines with this. The Brunello pairs really well with this, especially this one from Lasani's has a lot of terroir, kind of tastes from the place it should be from, which is what I think makes a wine great. A little more sea salt over the top. Perfect. For the recipe, click below or come see me at Carnimari. I make you a beautiful Milanese.